food. Yeah. They, um, Welcome back to the channel. This is part, well, the second video basically of the day. I'm Steve Surrey. And um, in the first part, we did a scramble. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. We're out on the, um, is this the red? Yeah, red nine. On the red nine, we're going to do a Stableford. So we're both scoring through nine holes, which is a little meat in the middle. I don't know, I never wanted meta. I don't even know why I've pulled that to be fair. But Stableford's nice. good. Stableford's a nice, nice friendly game. I see the roughs up on this nine, so uh, that was a good shout. <laughs> What's your number? 148 into the wind a bit, so it's probably a nice eight iron for me. Okay. down the hill for 50, 460. Yeah, a bit of wind off the left today. Probably, I think it's the toughest tee shot on the course, it's because you've got the straight hole but hitting slightly across the fairway and trouble left and right. So it's yeah. The target really test. is. Yeah, I normally go for the four sort of trees on top of the hill, yeah, just left of those. Right. Yeah. Just trying to little draw off those. Flat one again. How many European tour starts have you had then total? Uh, I think I've probably played around 27 events over the years. Uh, mainly co-sanctioned events in South Africa. I predominantly play the Sunshine Tour and uh, the odd event in Europe over the years. And I qualified for the British Open one year in 2009. Did you? So that was my first ever. So whereabouts was, where was the Open that year? Uh, Turnbury. Right, okay. So that was my first European tour start ever, so I'd never even played a challenge tour event at that point, so it's quite in at the deep end. Yeah, right. Um, so that year did you make it, was that just through regionals then local? Uh, I think I was exempt for regionals because of world ranking, uh, so I just went straight to the final stage. Uh, and I think I managed to come second at the final stage. It's quite nice because two of us in my group got through. Which, only like when there's only three spots available, three spots, it's quite yeah. cool. Yeah, that's quality. I think it helped having someone else in the same position as you in the group. Um, so no, it's nice, good experience. Nice to have a few stories from the tour. Yeah, yeah, travelling around. Uh, around uh, been a few, few problems. I flew to the wrong country once, managed to get on the wrong flight. I was meant to go and play the, the Zambian Open. Where'd you end up? So I flew UK to Ethiopia, waited four hours for my connecting flight and uh, managed to get on the wrong plane. I ended up in Gabon, That's which was that. a good question, somewhere in Africa. <laughs> but I didn't realise I'd flown to the wrong country till I was at the passport control. And the woman sort of said, where's your papers? I said, I don't have any papers. What are you here for? So I'm playing golf. I don't believe you. I'm playing the Zambian Open. The Zambia. It's 
like, yeah, Zambia, that's why I'm here. I said, no, 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 this is Gabon. So I was like, what? And yeah, they managed to let me get on the wrong flight at Ethiopia. That was nice, isn't it? So I flew five hours in the wrong direction, and then I had to fly five hours back and spend the night in Ethiopia, flew to the tournament and shot two 76s and missed the cut and went back to England. That was like a great week, that. So yeah, it was a good fun week. I right, see so the pins at the back, still playing 150 downhill. That flag's back right. So this is very juicy. Very juicy. Just try and play this sort of like middle of the green and expect this is gonna go a bit left. Shoot kick right. Yeah, Steve's a really good player against him part one. Um, sort of like plays Sunshine Tour most of the year in South Africa and um, he's currently back in the UK obviously due to Covid playing a few um, playing a few like Jamaica tour events and stuff that'll do <laughs> great shot mate What's this an eight? No, it's seven. Okay. A bit off the seven for me. Seeing then? Uh, I'm thinking just outside left lip, it's a bit downhill. Yeah, pull left. Yeah, very nice. This is going better than our uh, scramble. Slightly downhill, bit of right to left. Just depends how much on the pace. Looks like it swings a lot. Have you got to, what one do you trust more now with your feet and your eyes? I'm starting to trust feet. my feet more than my eyes. I find my feet are more accurate than my eyes. I just find that it's but the confusing thing is when you get a real good read with your feet and then you get over it and it looks like it's swinging. Yeah, yeah. Like now I'm reading just outside of my feet, but my eyes are telling me like yeah, yeah. I'm going out here. So I'm going to go in between. I mean, what's the deal with the hole? Not what's uh, the score? It's sort of slightly downwind, bunk up the left at 240, 250. It's not really in play today. Probably favour the right hand side to get a better angle into the pin. It's a bit on the left. Yeah. But not too far right because it's heavy rough down by the trees. Yeah, shot. Straight T shot. Yeah, when it's like that, and you have to like. Well, I'm going to try and hit the low. Got 128. Not a flyer at all. This is 
actually quite a decent little light setup. That flag looks like back left, isn't it? Yeah, 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 quite a long way back. There's probably five yards of fairway before the rough back back of the green. Okay. Right, so this is fairly like stock 52. Interesting that could be pretty close. Oh. I'm probably happy to give that to you, mate, to be honest. You are? Yeah. Trying to hit this what? Um, yeah, I'm probably going to try and hit this 250, 260 down the hill and shorten the track. Try and get it past the tree on the right, but shorten the bunker. So 250, 260 is a good number, really. Yeah. Youngster, I played with, well, not me as a youngster, him as a youngster, Torvion Ollison, when he was playing the Challenge Tour. I thought he was brilliant. He just had something about him that the ball striking was great, but also the way he carried himself, his attitude, and sure enough, within five or six years, he sort of played Ryder Cup. Yeah. Uh, I played with quite a lot of the other, sort of like David Howells, sort of the slightly older generation. But I think now it's a slightly different game power-wise and stuff rather than yeah. the skill of flighting the ball, keeping it under control, etc. Um, I think now it's a different a different form of impressiveness that it's almost harder to separate the good from the not so good golfers because it is so much of a power game on the range and sort of yeah. you go to a challenge tour event or so it's sunshine tour event, yeah, event is it? and they just certainly like sunshine tour, the lads when I said it so far, growing up in perfect weather, altitude, long, soft golf courses. I would say like a typical members club in England is a 6,400 yard, tree lined, yeah, totally. slopey fairways, poke it round, um, which doesn't really help you much when you're trying to play tournament golf. Whereas I think the, say Johannesburg, it's in their summer, the ground's soft, perfect weather, you just grow up hitting the ball as hard as you can. Yeah, it's right, right up your street. <laughs> just, just vomit. What's your number? 120. It's probably playing more like 130 into the wind. Hit a little control 9 iron. Simple hole. And I'm looking at birdie instead of. Whereas, yeah. not showing off, but it's like overcomplicating it, making it harder. And then when you are a little bit off, your miss gets that much bigger. And then you feel like you're playing worse. So it's like, I could put you on that tee, say it's just hit a normal four iron. And 80 out of 100 would finish on the fairway or the semi rough, no trouble with a wedge in. Flyery line. Yeah. Good jump. Good jump Do 
you see this as a chip or putt? I would probably putt it just from the. I always try and look where I've had. Down. If I had to play it 10 times, on average, with the 10 shots, what would go closer? I think a putt I'd probably get always within five feet, say, whereas a chip. I'd probably, I've got a chance of it in the outside six, seven feet with a bad bank or a bad strike or... Yeah. Because you don't know what one of those ten are going to come before you hit it. Or some people think, I've only got to play this once. So if we hit one good chip, that's fine. But yeah. Yeah, but you are only playing it once. If you hit one bad chip, Could be the you one. then think, I should have putted it. Then. Probably a good time to talk about that t shirt in a bit more detail now. Yeah, I think you sort of missed the start of that conversation over there, so I'm gonna let them know because that's an interesting example there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, just sort of talking about the simplicity of playing a golf hole rather than overcomplicating it by trying to hit the shot that A, you think the golf hole needs to be played, or B, sometimes what a massage your ego a bit and get your mate saying great shot rather than actually the simplest shot to play which you know, for you there would have been a four or five iron normal shot just a funny one like get it in play on the fairway or just in the semi you're going to make par sort of all day long yeah as you try and over complicate it a bit don't quite pull it off your miss gets so much worse and you're walking off for six and you can make six so quickly yeah from not really it's more of a mental mistake than a physical, technical, yeah. sort of bad shot. It's unnecessary. So yeah, you know, you never get the option to go back in golf. It's once you've hit the shot, you've got to sort of live with it. So try and hit the shot that is the simplest for you to play. That you know, you don't really need to shake the ball much. It's just sort of like what can find the fairway, what can yeah. avoid trouble, really. Sort of, which might sound a bit of a negative way to to look at it but sounds like a stress-free way to look at it yeah be fair. over the long the long term it's an easy way to play golf that there's trouble up the left so well, I'll just aim 15 yards further right than I normally would and I know I don't have to worry about the trouble on the left then mm -hmm. rather than I'm gonna try and cut it away from it or I draw hit it miles up the right and draw it and you're constantly changing your shot patterns just try and hit the same similar thing over and over and over again and just adjust your target rather than you know one minute trying to come across it in a big fade the next one trying to get under it and trying to turn the ball and then your misses just get bigger 